Hello everyone, today I am going to do a real quick review about this book. It is called Craft Interpreters and it was written by Robert Nystrom. And for those who don't know, he is the creator of the Dart programming language, the same as is used by the Flutter framework to create mobile, web and also desktop apps. So. Uh, this review uh, is going to be short because I'm still in the chapter 7 uh, but uh, even though I'm in, la I'm, I'm in chapter 7 I have learned a lot from this book and I really think uh, I should be doing a small review about this to let others uh, uh, also know about this book I really find it interesting so uh, to start off uh, I really like the way Robert has uh, teaching programmer concepts about interpreters because he can explain uh, advanced topics in great details but also keeping that simple and easy to understand. So if you are not on, um, I, I don't know how to put this, uh, you don't need to be a senior engineer to understand what's right in here. You just need to be curious about how do people make programming languages and how do they are made up. So, yeah, I really like uh, the way he teaches programming in this book. So we have here this small picture, actually a large picture. And this picture uh, summarizes what we are going to do. So we are going to uh, create an interpreter on the ground up so every piece of code that interpreter needs is going to be covered in this book uh, we are not uh, he's not going to hide any any detail everything is going to be covered in details and we are going to explore this uh, how the interpreters are made so okay moving on uh, this book is it has three chap uh, thirty chapters and is divided by is divided in three parts. The part one it's actually composed by three chapters. It's just an um, uh, like he, he said an uh, welcome to the book just to. Uh, Getting familiar with what we are going to do. In the part two, here, uh, it contains from the chapter four until chapter thirteen. In this part, we are going to implement the Lox language. Uh, for those who don't know, the Lox language is the language designed by the Robert himself, just to explain the concepts about how to create an interpreter. So, just to make it short, Lox language is more like a JavaScript, but um, how can I say? It's very similar to, to JavaScript. So the operators, the way we make functions, closures, everything is similar to JavaScript. In, chap in the part three, we are going to implement the same language but now in C, ah, I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I had to say that uh, in part two we are going to implement the Lox language in Java, and in part three we are going to implement the Lox language in C. And why in C? And why in Java? First, why we are going to create the same language twice? So it's because the first time you are going to implement the language, it's going to be in Java. But in the part two, we are only focused about learning the concepts related to how to create an interpreter, how to make an interpreter. So many things related to the implementation, like ah, uh, garbage collector, uh, what else can I say? 
I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm still in chapter 7, so I haven't uh, learned that yet. But uh, here we are just uh, concerned about learning what is an interpreter and also make the coding part. So here we are going to make the scanning, the representation of the code, passing expression. We are all, okay. Uh, statements in states, control flow, functions, resolving and binding, classes, inheritance. Everything is going to be made in Java. Now, uh, from the part tree, we are going to do in C, and here we can uh, we can notice that um, although we are going to make the same language, now there are a lot of concepts that that Java has uh, gave to us for free, but now we are going to implement this in in C, in the whole C, purely in C. So here. Uh, if you uh, if you have noticed before, we don't write a virtual machine in Java because Java already gave it to us this. Uh, we are we also don't compile expressions in Java. Uh, okay, we are going to do our own hash table for our own language. So making everything in C makes everything more faster in our language so but uh, what i really like this book is because it's going to teach us how to create our own garbage collector because as you might know java already has a garbage collector so we don't have to write it by ourselves java already gave it to us but in C, we are going to comment this by ourselves okay what else i can comment here okay as I said, this is going to be a small uh, review about this book. So, but I'm still in chapter seven, so I don't have much to talk. So this is going to be very, very quick. Here's the introduction. Here he's going to explain a little bit about this book, about how it's organized. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> he will explain some details about this book. Also, he has those pictures here on the left or the right side with some boxes to explain a little bit more about the, uh, the paragraph that we are reading. Okay, we also have challenges after each chapter we have challenges. But uh, if you don't know how to accomplish the challenge, you don't have to you don't have to worry because the challenges are just uh, additional details that would be interesting if you learn but if you don't want to make the challenges you can just go on in the chapter 2 we are going to take a little bit uh, we are going to learn a little bit about what is an interpreter what is a compiler how do those things are related what is, trans what is transpiring? And here he explained that one picture we saw in the, the beginning of the video. Here. So he is going to explain what is scanning, what is a token, what is a passing. And how you can see, uh, it's like a mountain. Like you will have to from the bottom to the up and passing through every step. But here is going to explain that in more details. What is a token? I'm going to spoil you guys. This is a token. <laughs> uh, okay. And there are a lot of there are a lot of concepts that that we have uh, to be familiar with. We don't have to learn everything in great details. Uh, but he's going to pass to us this content here so you do, we don't have to worry to be a master on it uh, how do exactly our uh, optimization works in a code how do we make a code ge ge generation from python to java what steps are hiding on there 
So you don't have to worry about this. You just have to be familiar with as he will explain this chapter. And also some details like what is a virtual machine. In that we are going to use the object Java virtual machine to make the part two. But see, we are going to implement this by ourselves. So this book is very, is uh, very interesting. I really love the way he teaches uh, all the way. And in chapter three, we are going to uh, taste what is the language we are going to implement. Because it wouldn't make sense if we already started coding a language without knowing how is the language we are going to implement. So here we are going to get familiar with. Uh, but, as, but as I said before, this language is more like a JavaScript, but actually makes sense. <laughs> okay, so we have Boolean values, numbers, and in logs we only have two type of numbers, a double, double, double fold, and an integer. We have strings, and yeah, everything that a, a language should should be arithmetic, uh, logical operators. Okay, moving on. We also have. Uh, classes and I really like this one because the way that I will uh, use OOP in code and think about the world as objects that has functionalities is very interesting in my opinion so I really like this detail in this book we also have inheritance and as I said before it's a little bit like JavaScript, uh, but this language is not that hard to, to learn. Okay, and here starts that part two where the fun really begins. We are going to implement our interpreter. And first, we are going to be the scanning. I'm not going to spoil you guys, but uh, I'm going to highlight something that I found interesting. It's because he uh, when it comes to explain, he, he will give you the code, uh, like here, and then, uh, let me see, here's another code, he won't, won't be, uh, fill up the full page of code, he will just give you the only needed code to that, uh, for the language to work. Uh, here also okay uh, yeah what I, what else can I say here <laughs> okay mm. okay mm. And here it comes chapter 5. In chapter 5, uh, he will give you some more theory about uh, how do we create our language grammar. So, although in the chapter we almost have no code to make, here, here uh, how can I put this? Uh, I think this is one of the most important chapters in this book because it, uh, as he said in the beginning of the chapter, here we are going to learn a lot about how do you create a language grammar. Like, how do the language know something is right if something isn't right? Uh, uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to spoil, you, but uh, I really think the, the chapter five until now it's one of the most important ones. Uh, I really love the theory that you're writing that's that's uh that's on here. Uh, okay.
okay. So as I said, there is the code and also some pictures and he won't fill up the, the, the whole page with code, he will just give you the, uh, the only needed piece of code to get the code working. And okay, um, I will go to chapter 6, and here is the passing expression where we are going to take all those tokens before we had in chapter 4 and consume it to produce an... Um, how can I put this? Hmm. Let me see if I can check here a picture. We are going to create this. We are going to create an, a binary tree that each node on its tree has an expression. And then in chapter 7 that I'm doing now, we are going to make all the operations that are needed. Okay. So the scanning in Parser isn't actually that hard. It's actually uh, very easy to do. There is no... I don't know how can I say. It's actually easy. There is no problem implementing this at all. And here is the chapter 7. So I'm still on this chapter and I'm still in the beginning. I think I'm I'm here. Yeah, I'm I'm here. In the truthness and falseness. So for this video is just about that. I don't have much to share. But I really like the way the how to explain concepts because uh, I really have learned a lot from this book. It's a great book to understand how do programming languages are made up, how do they are created, and uh, yeah, I really love this. Also, I'm sorry if uh, my English isn't that, that good, but uh, I don't have anyone else to practice with, so I'm, start, I'm recording videos in, in, in English now, uh, just to practice. If you know another way to do so, uh, please put in comments. So English is not my native language. So that is it guys. I hope you liked that. And that is it. Bye bye. Mitikuriti arigato.